Well, hello everyone. This is Robert from Black Belt Gaming. I'm getting ready to attempt my first regular game of Thunderstone Advance. I've got out the game board and I've been following the setup instructions for the first game. And they give you a list of cards that they recommend to use in your first game. And here they are. All of those cards have been pulled. And then they tell you how to arrange <clears throat> the board. And I've, I've done that. So the board is big, so I'm going to need to do a little camera work here to show you everything. I do have one extra card up here. And that's a that's a deck for familiars, and I'm not using any familiars this game. What this is is it's an avatar card, and this represents you, uh, the player, and what skill that you personally bring to your group as they go on their adventures. So I was going to play a ranger, and I'm level one, and it gives me a special ability when I'm in the dungeon. I can switch positions of two adjacent monsters in the hall. I found out that these are for experience points. So if I gain enough experience points, I believe while I'm in the village I can level up uh, heroes and I can also level up myself. And I think I can become a second level ranger. I don't know if it goes any higher than that, but um, that's sort of my understanding of how that works. We've got our heroes up here, starting with the regular and moving down through the different ones. We've got uh, Brad Pitt Achilles here, and looks like a hunter, and a cleric, and a wizard. Then we've got some weapons in this row, a uh, spear, a flail, and a, uh, a crossbow. And then we've got some sources of uh, light. These are items. We've got a torch, a moonstone. And then something here. It says, uh, destroy this card to place the top card of any hero stack on the top of your deck. So I think this helps you get a hero. Maybe for a little cheaper. Costs uh, five gold. Some of the heroes cost six and seven gold is what I see right now. And then we have some spells down here. The mass teleport, like we used from the previous uh, step one, two, and three tutorial. And then something called uh, summon storm. <clears throat> this gives you some magical attack power and some light as well. So uh, that's kind of the board setup. I guess over here in the village we've got a bounty hunter who gives us some uh, physical attack and then this battle scarred soldier who doesn't really seem to contribute any attack power but he has an ability that lets you draw a card and if it's a hero that hero is pumped up a little bit by two points of attack power physical attack power well up here uh, this is our our dungeon deck along with these different ranks in the dungeon hall. The wilderness board, which is what I'm using, is supposedly an easier board uh, to use than the other side, which is the, I guess it's the dungeon board. You've got four ranks instead of three, and the penalties for darkness are a little bit less. I think this represents more of an open space, being the wilderness instead of inside of a cave. And the light is not quite so dark outside versus inside underground. So we have penalties here, one, two, three, and four, uh, counting down that way. I'm going to be playing this one by the solo uh, rules that were contained in the rule book. And what that means is at the end of each of my turn, I'm going to take a monster and I'm going to be putting it on one of these ranks. And as I go through the adventure, at the end of each of my turns, uh, the monster that's here moves down and a new monster comes in. If any monster makes it all the way down and off the track, they attack the village and their 
uh, victory point value is used uh, against me at the end of the game. So I need to, by the end of the game, hopefully I can find and defeat the Thunderstone Bearer. The Thunderstone Bearer is a, a boss card which is shuffled into this uh, dungeon deck. You take 10 monster cards and you put him in there and shuffle those. And you take those 11 cards and put them down. And then you take the rest of the monster cards and put those on top. And I've already done that. So I need to find and defeat the Thunderstone Bearer. And then I'll calculate how many victory points uh, I've got versus how many uh, are used against me that have escaped and attacked the village. Kind of reminds me of Castle Ravenloft, the uh, scenario I did, uh, Gauntlet of Terror. Another thing, um, if the Thunderstone Bearer, I think if he goes off the track and escapes, uh, then, then we also lose the game. Alright, so I'm going to get ready here with uh, round one, and I'll probably make some mistakes here and there or some very noob moves so please excuse me but we'll get started and have some fun with uh, Thunderstone Advance <laughs> 